This video is going to be a review about how to factor. So anytime I see the directions factor, uh, I'm going to follow two basic steps. The first thing I'm always going to do is look for a greatest common factor. That's always step one. See if you can factor out the GCF. The next thing I'm going to consider is what size the polynomial is, meaning how many terms is it? Is it a binomial, a trinomial, or a four-term polynomial? So every time I do a question, I'm going to look for a GCF, and then I'm going to try to figure out what size it is to decide what to do next. So this first question here, I'm going to look for a GCF first. So I'll start with the coefficients. What's the GCF of 18, 16, and 14? And that's going to be 2. Now, they all have x, so x is also going to be part of the GCF. The smallest exponent on x is 3, so that's what we're going to pull out. They all have y, so the smallest exponent here is 1, y to the first. They don't all have z, so as you can see, this middle term doesn't have z, so z is not going to be part of the GCF. So then to see what's left on the inside, what I'll do is I'll divide each term by the GCF. So each term individually, I will now divide by the GCF. So this first term divided by the GCF is going to leave me 9y to the third z. And when I do the second term, I'm going to get 8xy to the fourth. And for the last term, I'm going to get plus 7x to the sixth. And that's it. Oh, and z squared, sorry. Since we didn't pull out z. Now I'll look at what's left. It's a, what size is it? It's a trinomial. Well, this doesn't have the exponent pattern we're looking for. We're really looking for something like this in a trinomial that we'd be able to factor it, where this exponent is twice this exponent. Since we don't have that up here, then we are done with this problem. All we could do on this one was pull out a GCF. So let's check out this next problem. Step one, I'll look for a GCF. They all, all the, each term doesn't share any common factor, so the next thing I'll consider is what size it is. This is a trinomial, it's got three terms, and the most important thing I want to notice is that the leading coefficient isn't one. So this is a more complex trinomial, so I'm gonna to have to use the master product method on this. To start this out, you're gonna take the five and multiply it by negative, three, negative 12. That's A times C. And when I do that on this one, I get negative 60. So now I'm looking for two factors of negative 60, two numbers that multiply to negative 60 that also add to positive 17. Since the two factors multiply to be negative, I know they have to be opposite signs because only a positive times a negative would give you a negative. Then when I check the middle sign, I see it's positive. I know that the bigger number is positive is because when I add them, it is the dominant one. That's why it comes out positive. I also know if I ignore the signs, they're 17 units apart. Now, if you can't figure this out right off the bat, if you can't figure it out off the top of your head, then what I suggest you do is just make a list. Now, we know the bigger one's going to be positive, so let's start listing the factors of negative 60. You got negative 1 and 60. Does that add to positive 17? No. Let's try 2. Does 2 go into 60? Yes. 2 and 30. Is negative 2 plus 30 17? No. So let's try negative 3. Negative 3 and 20, does that add to positive 17? Bingo, we're in business. So those are the two factors we're looking for. Now, if this was a simple trinomial, we'd be done at this point, and it'd be x minus 3, x plus 20, but it's a complex trinomial. And the idea here is that we're going to take this middle term and split it using these two numbers. We're going to keep the first term exactly the same. So you're going to get 5x squared. Now we're going to split the middle term. So I'm going to write minus 3x and plus 20x. And then I'm going to keep the minus 12. Now that I have four terms, I'm going to use factor by grouping. So I'm going to make two groups. I'm going to pull the GCF out of each group. So let's pull a 5x out of the, or sorry, they only have, 5 and 3 don't have anything in common. So we can only pull out an x. So let's do that. And with the second parenthesis, since this is positive right here, I can't quite see it, but it was a positive 20 you can see over here. This will be positive, and they have a 4 in common. Divide that out, and I get 5x minus 3. And then you can see that they both have 5x minus 3 in common, so I pull that out. And what's left? x plus 4. 
Complex trinomials are probably the most difficult, but just take your time and you'll get there. It's really a combination of doing simple trinomials and then creating a four-term polynomial so you can use grouping. Once you get it into a four-term polynomial, grouping is pretty simple from there. So let's try this problem over here. Let's pick a different color. All right, green. So again, step one, look for a GCF. So here I'll factor out of uh, the GCF. They all have a four in common, the coefficient, so I can factor that out. So the GCF is going to hang out outside. So I'll divide each term by four. And I get x squared minus 8x minus 20. Now, I'm, this GCF is just going to hang out out here. I'm just going to now concentrate on what's left inside and see if it factors. Now, what size is this that's left? It's a trinomial. And because the leading coefficient's one, um, we know that this is a simple trinomial, so I just have to figure out what multiplies to negative 20 and adds to negative 8. Well, if it multiplies to be negative, they're opposite signs. Since they add to be negative, the bigger factor is negative, and I know they're 8 units apart. And in this case, it's going to be negative 10 and positive 2. And then I'm done after this because it's a simple trinomial. I don't have to do the split like this one because it's a simple trinomial. I could do the split, but it would be redundant and I'd end up with these two factors anyway. And then don't forget about the GCF that you pulled out. It doesn't go away. So that's your whole factoring for that question. All right, let's try this next question down here. Look for a GCF. Now, there is no GCF, but I will notice that the leading coefficient is negative. And to make this problem easier, just factor out a negative 1. Factor out that um, negative leading coefficient. So I'll divide everything by negative 1. I'll pull out the negative, so I get positive x squared minus 11x plus 30. And now again, this negative just hangs out outside. I'll just try to factor what's left inside. So what multiplies the positive 30 and adds to negative 11? It's a trinomial, a simple trinomial. What multiplies the positive 30 adds to negative 11? And we know that it multiplies to be positive, that the two factors are the same sign. But if they add to be negative, they both must be negative. So in this case, that's going to be negative 6 and negative 5. And again, just make a list of factors like we did on this one up here if you can't figure it out right off the bat. And don't forget the negative that you pulled out. For this next problem, again, I'll look for a GCF. Is there a GCF to pull out here? No. So then I'll consider what size is it? It's a binomial. So the first thing that comes to mind is, is it a difference of squares? So it's definitely a difference, and is each side a perfect square? You know 9's a perfect square, you know 100's you know a perfect square. It's easy, even easier to tell with the exponent. If the exponent is even, it's a perfect square. So if we think about this, this is really like 3x squared squared minus 10 squared. So this is going to factor into 3x squared plus 10 times 3x squared minus 10. And really I should check to see if either of these are a difference of two squares. You can see this one's not a difference, and it's a square, not a cube. And this one's a difference, but 10's not a perfect, cube, perfect square, neither is 3, so we're done. Coming over here, again, we'll look for a GCF. There is no GCF, so I move on. What size is it? It's a tri trinomial. And we can see the leading coefficient's 10 which isn't 1, so this is a complex one, so we'll do a times c, which is 20. So what multiplies the positive 20 adds the positive 9. Multiplies to be positive, so they must be the same sign, adds to be positive, so they're both positive. So in this case, it's 4 and 5. So I'm just going to change color here to see a little bit easier. So I'll keep the first term exactly the same, 10x squared. Now I'll split the middle term with these two factors, 4x, so plus 4x because they're positive, plus 5x, plus 2. So now I will try to factor by grouping. Pull out the GCF. I'm pulling out a 2x out of this first parenthesis. And if, here you can see the GCF's 1, but with grouping we have to pull out something, so we will pull out that GCF of 1. And you can see they both have 5x minus 2, so we'll pull that out. And what's left over? 2x plus 1. Moving to the bottom of this page. Uh, we'll start with this problem again. I'll look for a GCF first. Do they have anything in common? We can see here that I can factor out a 2y. So when I do that, divide each term by 2y, I end up with y to the third minus 125. Now when I see that y to the third, 
and I look inside and I check out what size is this. I can see it's a binomial. And I see this 3. I'm thinking, it, is it a, uh, either a sum or difference of cubes? Since it's a subtraction, I'll ask myself, is it a difference of cubes? Well, excuse me, since y cubed is a, is a perfect cube and 125 is a perfect cube, uh, we're going to be able to factor this. We know we have y cubed minus 5 cubed. So the first parenthesis is going to look pretty much exactly the same. And for the second parenthesis, I'll take the first term squared. This next sign is always opposite this first sign. Multiply these together in the middle, 5y, and then the last term squared. And don't forget to put the GCF back on the outside. And there you go. So that's a difference of cubes right there. Uh, this next problem over here, we can see we're going to look for a GCF. There is none. And it's a four-term polynomial, so I automatically think grouping. I'll split it into two groups. I'm going to pull the GCF out of each group. First group is 7x squared, which leaves me with an x plus 2. Second group is positive 8. Oops, sorry, this should be a minus 2. And a minus 2. And you can see they have an x minus 2 in common, so I'll pull that out. And we're left with 7x squared plus 8. And these are binomials, but neither one is a difference of two squares, so I'm done. Nor is it a sum of cubes or a difference of cubes. So the next one, we'll start by looking, is there a GCF? No, there's not. It's a binomial. Again, I look, I see the cubes here, and I know these are perfect cubes, so I'm already thinking this is a sum of cubes. So what cubed is 27? 3, and this is going to be x cubed plus what cubed is 64, 4, and y. So when we do a sum of cubes, the first parenthesis will keep this plus. So we'll get 3x plus 4y, 4y. And the second parenthesis will square the 3, square the x, you get 9x squared. Opposite sign in the middle here, so minus. Multiply these together, you get 12xy. And then we'll square the last term. 4 squared is 16. And y squared is obviously y squared. And there's that one. Down here, we look for a GCF. There is no GCF. Let's switch colors again. And what size is it? It's a binomial. So I see subtraction. I know 16 is a perfect square. So I'm thinking, is this a difference of two squares? And we can see that it is because we have x squared squared, which is x to the fourth, minus 4 squared. So, with a difference of squares, we'll get x squared plus 4 times x squared minus 4. Now, you should notice that the second parenthesis here is still a difference of squares. The first one's a sum, so that one's not going to change. But this is going to change into x plus 2 times x minus 2. And then don't forget the x squared plus 4. So make sure you factor it fully. Always check those binomials at the end. And for the next one here, GCF, there is no GCF. Uh, what size is it? It's four terms, so I'm automatically thinking grouping. Now make sure you get the sign in here. Pull out the GCF. I'm going to pull out an x squared from this first parenthesis. Left with 2x plus 5. Now for the second parenthesis, because this negative is in the middle, I'm pulling out a negative with the GCF. So I'm pulling out a negative 4. So I'm dividing each term by negative 4, which is going to change the signs here. So it's going to be positive 2x plus 5, and that's good because now these two parentheses match up. Pull that out. What's left over? x squared minus 4. And this time again, we have a difference of squares here. So this actually factors a little bit further. And don't forget your 2x plus 5. And one more, and we'll call it a day. So over here, we look for a GCF. There is no GCF. So what size is it? It's a binomial. I see the 3. It's a cube. And I also see a perfect cube here. So I'm thinking, is this a sum of two cubes? Sum because it's plus. And it is. We have x cubed plus 2 cubed. So the first parenthesis is exactly the same. Then I'll get x squared, opposite sign, multiply these, square that, and you're done. So when you factor, always look for a GCF and decide what to do next based on what size the polynomial is. And that's an in-depth look at factoring.